Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Today in this power yoga class, we will strengthen the whole body, especially the core and working on our stability. We will do one flow two times. If it's a little bit too fast, then just come back to this video and do it several times. And yeah, try to make it part of your weekly workout routine. Before we start, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button to support this channel to grow and whenever you're mad, <laughs> whenever you're ready, grab the mat and let's practice. <laughs> All right, today we start in a kneeling position. You decide if you want to tuck your toes or untuck. Just make yourself comfortable because before we start, even if it's a powerful class, we take the time to take five deep breaths. So roll your shoulders up back and relax, place the hands on your laps, facing up or down, and whenever you're ready, close your eyes. Take a deep inhale through your nose, lengthen the spine, and with every exhale, relax your face, your shoulders a little bit more. And try to remember this feeling of stillness, of peacefulness for the whole class, especially in challenging poses, come back to this slow and deep breathing. One more deep inhale. Exhale, open the mouth, release. And then gently open your eyes, interlace your fingers and just Circle a little bit around to warm up the wrists. Hope you guys are ready to sweat and to strengthen the body. And then shake it out, lift your arms up, really straighten the arms to stretch the sides of your body, the latissimus dorsi, and then open and close your hands as fast as possible. Keep opening and closing, and then we're adding some movement. So bring the arms to the side slowly. Also warming up the shoulders. The palms could face down now in the shoulder level. And try to do it a little bit more, a little bit faster. I can already feel it in my forearms, the burning in the forearms. Move your hands to the front. Keep opening and closing even a little bit faster now for 10, 9, 8, slowly move up, 7, 6, 5, oh, four, 3, 2, and 1, shake it out. Your forearms should be ready now. Lift your arms up, and now we're moving the arms forward and backward to opening up the chest, warming up the pectoralis muscle, just some gentle movement, so not too heavy, not 100% of your range of motion in your shoulders, just a little bit forward and backward. Let's do 10, 9, straight in the arms, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Shake it out. All right, coming to a tabletop position. Make sure that whenever your hands are on the mat to spread your fingers, the index fingers are facing forward in shoulder distance, legs in hip distance, and then just circle a little bit around to warm up the wrists. If you need a little longer wrist warm up, then feel free to pause here and to, yeah, take your time, five minutes, to do a proper wrist warm up. That's the only thing here on YouTube, we don't have so much time, so we have to skip some things, but I still want to do the warm-up, especially the wrist warm-up is really important. But if you need more, like I already mentioned, just press pause. All right, five rounds of cat and cow, because this is just always a good move. Inhale, tilt your pelvis, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, chin to your chest, round your spine. Inhale, creating this back bend, lifting the chest, look up. On your exhale, imagine there's a hand between your shoulder blades you're trying to press away. Three more rounds in your own pace. Make sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders. Sometimes they're too far forward, so bring them a little bit more back. This helps you to round your spine even more. Last round, so we have five in total. 
If you have done six, no problem, even better. <laughs> and come back into neutral position, tuck your toes. Again, check the alignment, really important now, because we don't want to have too much tension on the wrists. Tuck your toes, and then lift your knees up just an inch over the mat. An inch, I heard this <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I would say centimeters, but it sounds better. Lift an inch or two inches. I don't even exactly know how much that is, but just a little bit. Lift your knees up a little bit. And if you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, and I know you want to do it, otherwise you would not have chosen this class, then lift the right foot up, but keep your knees parallel. Feel the strength, the burning, the power in your core for five, four, three, two, one. Keep your knees up, lower the right foot down, lift the left foot up, keep the knees parallel. The foot also, just a little bit in the air. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower the left foot down, keep the knees up. Left hand onto your fingertips. If you want, you could also try to bring the left hand to your right shoulder. But keep the upper body, upper body parallel. Upper body parallel. And Zungenbrecher. <laughs> Five, four, three. Two, one, change to the other side. Right hand, fingertips, or to the left shoulder. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job, guys. Both hands on the mat. Lift your weight back and up. Downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, always a great position to calm down your breath, to rest. And of course, you always have the option to come into child's pose or to pause the video. Maybe want to bend one knee after the other, just to make sure that your palms are pressing into the mat, your arms are straight, to really lengthen the spine. That's the purpose. This is why we're doing downward facing dog primarily, or in this case, to lengthen the spine. Two or three more breaths while I'm putting the shirt into my pants. And then bring the feet together, bend the knees, chin to your chest, slowly roll forward into a plank. So this is the perfect start for doing push-ups. You decide if you want to hold here, and we all do something between zero and ten push-ups. I don't count because I don't know your pace. Just find your own pace. And if you need to use your knees, then feel free to use your knees. It's just warming up the chest muscles, the arms, and I think I already have done 10 pieces, 10 reps. All right, and then to meet in plank pose, we're holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Bend your knees, shift your weight back and up, downward facing dog, open the feet in hip distance without any movement now. If you need to keep your knees bent, feel free to do so. And now we're doing something to work on the stability. So bring the left hand onto your fingertips, or left hand in the air, and then lift the right foot up. Maybe you can straighten the right leg into this three-legged down dog. You can also bring the left hand to the side. And you decide if you want to hold here, and slowly want to tap the right knee to the right armpit, or if you want to use the left hand for support for five, Four, three, two, and one. Step back, downward facing dog. Right hand onto your fingertips. Always the option to stay here, no pressure. Find your own challenge in this class. Or lift the hand up and the left leg. Maybe one side is a little bit more wobbly than the other. We try not to judge. We try not to vergleichen, <laughs> compare. And whenever you're ready, left knee, left armpit, maybe with the right hand, maybe without. For five, four, three. This would actually be a cool photo. <laughs> Two, and one. Both hands on the mat, step back, downward facing dog. Great, guys. This is just a warm up, it's just the beginning. <laughs> Bring the feet together, bend your knees, chin to your chest, roll forward into your plank. And then again, right hand onto right fingertips, or maybe right hand onto the left shoulder for five, four, three, two, one. Right hand down, left hand fingertips, or right shoulder. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Both hands back on the mat. Inhale, lean forward. Exhale, slowly lower down onto your belly. Untuck your toes. On the inhale, lift your chest, low cobra. Whole strength here coming from your lower back. Really press the toes into the mat to engage your hamstrings. And if you want, you can lift your hands up so you're 100% sure that all the strength is coming from your back and not from your hands. We stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lower down. Open the arms to the left and to the right. 90 degrees bent in cactus arms. On the inhale, lift your chest. On the exhale, lower down without touching the mat. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Three more times. Last time we're holding as high as possible for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly release both hands back on the mat. Push yourself back into a child's pose. And from here, tuck your toes, lift your buttocks back and up, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. One. Try to press the heels equally into the mat. Two. Keep your arms straight. Press the hands into the mat. And three. Deep breathing. And bring the feet together. Bend your knees. Jump, step, or fly to the top of the mat. Inhale, half we lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees. The hands like two brushes on the mat into Utkatasana chair pose. And we're going straight into our flow for today. Take a deep inhale here. On the exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale. On the exhale, place the right elbow on the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, start twisting over the left. Bring the shoulder, the left one away from the ear and try to twist a little bit deeper with every exhale. Keep your butt low. One more deep breath. And then stay in this position, bring the right foot onto the toes, so lift the right heel up, and then see if you can slowly step back into this twisted lunge. So still the elbow on the outside of the thigh, still twisting. And whenever you're ready, slowly come up. Lift the right arm to the front, left arm to the back in this twisted high lunge. Make sure that the left knee is over the ankle and you're not leaning forward so your spine is perpendicular. And with every exhale, try to twist a little bit more. It's great work for the spine, lower back, and of course for the left quadriceps. Maybe you can already feel it burning Holding here for three more breaths. One, two, and three. To take the whole range of motion in your shoulders, rotate the left arm down, right arm up. Windmill into warrior two. I just quickly turn around. So we still face each other. In your warrior two, make sure the left knee is over the ankle, hips open to the longest side, outside of the right foot pressing into the mat. And then remember the calmness of your first five deep breaths. Try to bring them back into the present moment. Last deep breath. And then slowly transition into your surface lunge. So straightening the left leg, rotating the right foot so it's facing to the corner of the mat, bending the right knee in the same direction as your toes, bring the left foot onto your heel. Feel free to use your hands. Coming deep, check the alignment of the knee, should face in the same direction as your toes. And the left foot is active, so we don't have an internal rotation here. The foot should not move forward, otherwise the whole femur, whole thigh one would move with the left foot. 
Stay here. Maybe you can get rid of your hands. Shoulders relaxed for five, four, three, two, one. And then slowly come back up into your warrior two. Maybe more gracefully than I did. Inhale here. Exhale, both hands on the mat. Step back. And let's do another round of push-ups. Something between zero and 10. If you don't want to do any push-ups, just holding plank, doing some core work, or use your knees. And then we all meet in plank position. On the inhale, lean a little bit forward. On the exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Untuck your toes, low cobra, cobra, or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Bring the feet together, bend your knees, gaze to the top, jump, step, or fly to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Hands to your height. Take a deep inhale. On exhale, place the left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, twist over the right shoulder. Keep your knees bent, parallel to each other. One more breath. And then see how slow, how controlled you can lift the left heel up and step back into this twisted high lunge. Try to straighten the left leg, keep the right knee bent 90 degrees. And on the inhale, lift up, left arm forward, right arm to the back. In this twisted high lunge. Deep abdominal breathing. Maybe you can twist a little bit more, gazing over the right shoulder. Also <laughs> a balancing pose, a little bit at least. And then again, right arm down, left arm up, windmill into your warrior two. Five deep breaths. Deep inhale. On the exhale, slowly find your transition into Skandasana, turning left foot to the corner, right foot on the heel, hands to your heart, or maybe with the help of your hands. This could look like this, or maybe your butt is already almost touching the mat. But keep the left foot on the heel, so not lifting the heel up. And then here for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come back into your warrior two. Windmill your hands down, step back, and do another vinyasa. So lean forward, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, I want you to bring your feet together, bend your knees, and then try to jump. So your left foot is on the left side of the mat, and your right foot on the right side. Into this Malasana Yogi squat. And go not fully down, so it should be a little bit of an exercise. So maybe halfway, arms forward. And if you want to get more challenge for your chest, bring the hands together and really press the hands against each other. For five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lower down, maybe with the help of your hands, maybe without rolling into Navasana boat pose. What would be a power yoga class without core work, right? If you want to do a five-minute core challenge, here is the info to really work on your core strength. We'll just do some quick crunches. So lower down all the way on your back. Keep the knees bent 90 degrees, hands behind your head. And then try to bring the right elbow to the left knee. Lower down without touching your head to the mat. And left elbow, right knee, and back. And then continue in your own pace, working on your core. Try to keep breathing. 
and now it's so much easier if someone counts. So let's do 10 on each side, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, let's go, a few more. One, and then try to attach your forehead to your knees, holding here, five, four, I know it's hard, but you can do it, three, two, and one. Hug the knees to your chest, roll back and forward three times, one, two, prepare yourself, last round, we're standing up. Ta-da, <laughs> all right, great job, guys. We're doing one or two more rounds in this flow, keep flowing with one breath per movement. So make sure that your feet are yeah, maybe slightly apart, but on top of the mat, bend your knees, arms up, chair pose. Inhale here, exhale, hands to your heart. Deep inhale, on the exhale, right elbow outside, left thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, twist. Then see how slowly you can step the right foot back into this twisted high lunge. Slowly rise up, right arm forward, left arm to the back. Right arm up, left arm down, windmill warrior two. And then from here, rotate the right foot to the corner of the mat and come into surface lunge. We're adding some movement, so from this surface lunge, come back into warrior two. One, and lower down again, always switching the position of your right foot. Two, arms in shoulder level. And lower down, great work for your gluteus. Three, two more. Four, and last one, five. Both hands on the mat, step back, do another vinyasa. In your downward facing dog, bring the feet together and then slowly walk a little bit forward, bend your elbows, and it's time for crow pose. If you have never practiced crow before, then just try to lift one foot up and then the other, placing the elbows to the outside of your arms, and your knees on the outside of your arms. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. Jump or step back into your plank. Push yourself up, downward facing dog. And again, find your way, you can jump, step, or try to do a quick handstand. Whenever it feels good to you, inhale, enter the spine, exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees, lift your arms up, chair pose, hands to your heart. Inhale here, exhale, left elbow outside, right thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, twist. See how controlled you can step the left foot back. Big step, whoa, slippy without the mat. So here's a better position. Inhale, slowly come up, left arm forward, right arm to the back. And then windmill into warrior two. Take a deep inhale here. And again, movement into skandhas and the surface lunge. Check the alignment of your left knee, lower down. And come back, warrior, bending the right knee. Find your own pace, five times. If this is too fast for you, just do the first round again where we're holding the asanas and then come back to this practice every week. Make it part of your weekly strengthening routine. This is like a yoga workout, but still with conscious breathing. And warrior two. Windmill your hands down, step back and do another vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra and exhale, downward facing dog. And again, try to jump with the left foot to the left side of the mat, right foot to the right, bend your knees, hop. Slow, controlled step to the left and to the right. Again, in this little higher yogi squat, arms to the front or pressing the hands together. For five, four, three, two, one. Lower down with the help or without your hands. Navasana boat pose. Last exercise for the core and for the whole class is to slowly lower down, keep the legs lifted, arms over your head, right leg touches left foot, left hand touches right foot. Let's do 10 
on each side, nine. Eight, if you want, you can lower your head down. It's a little bit easier. Seven. Six. Legs are straight, five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And release. Great job, guys. Thank you so much for practicing with me. If you want to continue and make this a full one-hour class, then just do a stretching routine or another flow, or maybe, yeah, go for a run, do something, finish with a meditation, whatever it is, to make this a complete practice for you. Or maybe just stay down on your mat in Shavasana, and yes, allow yourself to rest and to feel the energy and the heat we have created. As always, guys, I thank you so much for practicing with me. If you haven't subscribed, please support the channel. Maybe you could also share it in your stories or, yeah, of course, hit the like button. And I can't wait to meet you guys somewhere around in person. I wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Namaste. <laughs>